over the weekend, Julia Gillard indicated her intention of applying Australian workplace laws to foreign crews working aboard ships engaged in Australian domestic trade. A couple of weeks ago on The Union Show, we brought you an interview with Paddy Crumlin, who's the National Secretary of the Maritime Union of Australia. Let's have another look at that interview where Paddy discusses just this issue. Well, it's business as usual in ports around the country. Behind the scenes, the Maritime Union has been busily putting their case forward to the recent Senate inquiry into the Fair Work Bill, and specifically seeking to end the abuse of permits issued to flag of convenience vessels by the previous government as part of their war in the Australian labour movement. The Navigation Act provides that coastal shipping is part of the domestic transport chain, no different than road and rail. But if there's not a ship, well then you continue to need to move those cargoes, so you have a permit. So if you like, it was the exception to the rule when there wasn't a ship available, an Australian ship available. What the Howard government did was turn that around under the transport ministers, uh, who basically started awarding permits even when there were Australian ships available. And in the end, we're awarding permits on the basis of what was the cheapest. There's no argument about what the cheapest is. These ships are flag of convenience, Panama registered, Filipinos, exploitative wages, you know, tax avoidance. I mean, a perfect example is the River Yarra. Under the Howard regime, the company reflagged the vessel from Australia to the Bahamas. They sacked all the crew and then they applied to the minister and said there's no longer an Australian ship available to service the Australian domestic trade but we happen to have a Bahaman flag vessel and we're flying in a Ukrainian crew and because there's no Australian crew available or Australian ship available we want to use that under permit. Our guys refused to leave the vessel. There was a very long uh, political and industrial struggle down there uh, at the end of the day, the crew was removed from the vessel. Since then, it's had a Ukrainian crew operated in exactly the same trade it's been going, but not as an Australian vessel and not under Australian conditions of employment. After a series of bitter disputes and a dramatic decrease in Australian flagged vessels and crews working the coasting trade, the maritime unions fought back. We went to the High Court, the three maritime unions went to the High Court, and the High Court found unanimously that those ships, any ship working on permits on the Australian coast should pay Australian conditions of employment and come under the Australian award. However, the victory was short-lived as the government circumvented the court via their infamous work choices legislation. We'd won, if you like, scored all the points, gone the 80 minutes and ended up losing the game. Um, and all we've been seeking to do is prosecute our case under Fair Work Bill that we want the High Court decision reinstated and that these ships that have been artificially introduced or introduced under a regime to artificially remo remove Australians from their place of work and replace them with cheap imported labour, uh, we want that to stop. The MUA are proposing that the Fair Work Bill be amended to address the imbalance created by the abuse of permits by forcing all vessels working the domestic routes to adhere to Australian wages and conditions. However, ship owners in Australia and around the world are lobbying strongly to have foreign ships operating under permits continue to be excluded from such obligations. Overseas ship owners, they're opposing it. They're a very formidable lobby. Um, they're in, in collusion with many Australian shippers that basically want to utilise a competitive advantage, you know, um, by the use of cheap foreign labour uh, over their competitors. Um, and that's one of the big problems, because in the industry, people will set up under the legislation and under the rules, move that cargo in an Australian ship and an Australian flag. If you can come in with a foreign ship paying a quarter or less of the labour costs, no taxation, responsibility, no ability from a regulatory point of view to have to adhere to any Australian law, you have a tremendous competitive advantage, the equivalent of a Filipino 
truck driver coming in under Filipino law, Filipino road taxes and competing in a market with Australian trucking operatives, I mean they're going to be able to get market share. It's purely about unfair competition uh, based on the exploitation of foreign labour and, and foreign uh, tax avoidance schemes really. At last year's MUA National Conference, Julia Gillard indicated that the Rudd government would act to address this issue. The previous government's policies, including its enthusiasm for issuing single and continuing voyage permits like confetti, led it to ignore important objectives relating to the nation's shipping policy. It's time we had a fresh overview as the basis for new policy. This is a big test from the, for the Minister for Industrial Relations to deliver on what she has committed to. Um, but every indications are that the Rudd government is determined to revitalise Australian shipping. They know that it was shot, an innocent bystander shot in the blue between the Howard government and the trade union movement in this country. They started off with Patrick's. We resolved the Patrick dispute through community action and the capacity of people to fight against the machine, if you like. Uh, but of course, shipping got done in the eye and they've made the decision that they're going to revitalise the industry. There's been a parliamentary inquiry. Uh, we're in the process of determining what those outcomes will be. They're all sympathetic and supportive for the revitalisation of Australian shipping. The Rudd Labor government is committed to a positive future for our maritime industry as part of a positive future for our nation. And of course, in the Deputy Prime Minister's area, uh, we've now got the Fair Work Bill and the test uh, that that's going to put to her. We're confident uh, that she'll match up. If she doesn't, well then we'll be very vocal in holding her and the government to account because, like you said, we believe that they've committed to us and uh, the Rudd government said they're people of their word and we'll hold them to that.